Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Bull TV. My name is Matt Canizaro, and you have tuned in for an awesome evening here of coverage from the 2021 PWBA Hall of Fame Classic at the ITRC in Arlington, Texas. It's the final event of the kickoff classic series. And I don't really know if I'm more excited now about the amazing stepladder coming up tonight or the pregame show. It is star studded for sure. We've got a quartet of Hall of Famers. Uh, with They've been designated the dominant players of their generations. Together they have approximately 100 PWBA Tour titles. Their places in history earn them each the designation of the players of their decades. I uh, cannot wait to bring them in for the pregame show. Uh, we've got the bowler of the 70s, Betty Morris. The bowler of the 80s, Lisa Wagner. The bowler of the 90s, Wendy McPherson. And the bowler of the first decade of the 2000s, Carolyn Doran Ballard. They're going to join us to share some thoughts about their time under the TV lights, the pressures of being on the PWBA tour, and of course, some thoughts on tonight's finalists for the PWBA Hall of Fame Classic. We'll have all that in just a moment. And also would like to introduce the world-famous podcaster and bowling analyst, Tony Franklin, who will be here to run the gauntlet with these ladies before we get going tonight. He'll be joined on the show tonight by Carolyn Doran Ballard and Aaron Smith. They'll have all the action for you as things unfold from the ITRC. I cannot wait to hear what all these lovely ladies have to say about their time in the spotlight. But that's enough about me. Let's get to it. I'm going to sit back and let Tony Franklin take over and bring in all of our Hall of Famers. All right. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. We'll... Uh... Go ahead and bring in all of our group here and we'll get started. So uh, we are missing Lisa Wagner. We're hoping to get her on some technical challenge, but we'll hope to get her on here shortly. And Matt, as he said, have this group has almost 100 titles. So what you're looking at right now is truly the Mount Rushmore of ladies professional bowling. <laughs> Uh, I heard a comment earlier today from Jason Thomas who said this group right here has about 80% of every professional <laughs> tournament that's ever been won. So that right there in its own right is uh, amazing. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at all of my idols growing up, so it's pretty cool for me too. So let's go ahead and get started. We uh, we want to get to the talent here. So, Betty, we're going to start with you. Uh, you're a trailblazer, a pioneer in bowling. Uh and I, I read a quote from you where you mentioned how you were so proud to be able to have bowled really at the, the highlight of professional bowling, whether men's or women's, and, and how much that meant to you. 17 titles, three-time player of the year. Uh, and just, you know, for the role that you played in making it possible for bowlers to follow you, everybody on this group, and then everyone who's out there bowling tonight. So what does it really mean to you, or what, what do you think about the really just the incredible progress 50 years later from the 70s that uh, we're still bowling and bowling for great prize funds with great talent? Well, I think it's just tremendous, and I've really enjoyed watching the bowling and, and getting to root for some of the players. They're all so individual, and it's so great that there's so many of them from all over the world. It's really been bowling back in the spotlight, especially for women. And it's a big help for uh, colleges everywhere and recruiting bowlers. And I just think it's fantastic. And the prize funds are great. And I look forward to uh, a really good future for women's sports. Yeah, you know, and that's an amazing piece, right? The bowlers from all over the globe. Uh, when you were bowling, did you, did you bowl very much against uh, women from, you know, other countries? You know, we had we had bowlers that came from Japan mainly. Uh, uh, Kao Kasuda, she was, I think she won, eventually won the Queen's Tournament, but they did not bowl week after week. They would come over for select tournaments, so it wasn't uh, 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 bowlers that would bowl on the tour. And it's really great that the tour is uh, promoting enough tournaments that they're age able to come over and bowl. Yeah, and, you know, you mentioned uh... – coming over from Japan. So let's go ahead and ask our next question to Miss Wendy McPherson, right? I believe she has about 10 uh, Japanese <laughs> professional titles. So she went the other way to pick up some uh, extra scratch. Uh, but Wendy, we have a really amazing story this week. It's Jillian Martin. She's 16 years old. Uh, you happen to hold a record that was challenged just a few days ago and will be challenged once again. So could you tell us exactly how an 18 year old <clears throat> high school student wins the U.S. Open uh, so many years ago for that record. How did you do that? I don't know. 
I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I look back and um, I remember uh, Pat Costello said to me, she says, Wendy, one day you'll realize what you did. Um, you know, and sometimes I think youth allows you to be naive in a lot of situations, um, which tends to, uh, you know, calm your nerves type of thing. But it was one of the greatest things that ever had ever happened to me. And, um, you know, it was, it was a little did I know it was a turning point and because it, it actually taught me how to win and want to win. And right out of the gates, first tournament ever, I'm a, I won and I want to win. And, you know, it, it's a, it's a great feeling and I, I couldn't imagine what Jillian's feeling and, and I'm, I'm so happy for her and, and it's absolute proof that anyone can do it. And, um, it's exciting. I mean, you know, who's to say a 15 year old or a 14 year old won't be next. Um, the, the sport, the, the kids, I quote unquote kids, um, because I think everyone's kids to us <laughs> now, <laughs> but the kids are, are better and better. I mean, the the the, ta the youth, the talent in the youths um, divisions, and you see it a lot in SYC events, and um, you know the youth in ju junior gold. Um, the youth is unbelievable now, and um, it's really a, a fun thing to watch. Yeah, I, I, I think that's really the, the story there is all of the youth bowling and the different events, college bowling, high school bowling, it, it goes on and on. And I think it does lead to that. I When I was bowling, there was no high school bowling. You know, college wasn't nearly to the level that it is today. So I think it's great. Maybe it is a lot of the opportunities. Uh, and for you, uh, you really have set the pace for a lot of things. You know, you have 20 titles. The first lady professional went over a million dollars. You want 120,000 for shooting 300 uh, on TV in Japan. I mean, there's so many of those records that you hold. Is there any one that's maybe more special than another? Oh, wow. You know, I, I, I've i always looked back. I have three equal. I have my U.S. Open in 1986. Again, it, it set the tone for my career, I think. Yeah. I have... Um, the Samstown at the end of 99, uh, 2000 to allow me to be bowler of the decade for the 90s. And one of the other greatest things ever was my USBC Eagle yeah. for the singles yeah. event. Um, the, those were three equal things that choked me up because it was, if I never do another thing, which I, you know, I'm, I haven't been bowling much. If I never do another thing, those three, I'm so proud of. Yeah, I failed to mention the the eagle, which is as impressive as anything in there. It's a a three game sprint, and you only have to beat about fifty thousand bowlers, and you did it. I mean, that's uh, again just an amazing accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a dream come true, Tony. Absolutely. So, Carolyn, uh, last certainly not least, the bowler of the two thousands. And just someone I've looked up to and been uh, enamored with my entire life. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah right. No, it's true. Uh, 20 titles. Again, you've you've done it all. Player of the year two times. You look at the uh, those that came before you and paved the way. This panel, our Mount Rushmore right here. And, you know, you mentioned on the show today on the live stream just about your fierce uh, nature and aggressiveness and uh, what types of uh you know, attributes did you learn from some of the, the ladies that came before you and the ones you you bowled against when you were really uh, up and coming before you got to, to be the player of the year? What were some of those things that you really learned from from them? Well, number one, I mean, there, there are so many common things between, you know, the difference between great and good and and looking at the two ladies on the screen, um, hard work, practice, a good ethic, you know, on and off the lanes. Those were the things that you knew you had to have to get you to the next level. And, and both ladies have said something very, it answers your question. So Betty uh, did not bowl much when I first started coming out, but every time I saw Betty, she was kind, she was helpful. She told oh, you some little nice. story. Um, that's mentoring. She could have just passed me right by. Wendy. She was the she was the one that was your friend on and off the lanes. We got to talk about things, but she was the one that pushed you to want to be better because she kept winning. So these were all things um, that I think equal 
where when we bowled on tour, we talk a lot about, yeah, there were a lot of maybe rivalries on the, on the lanes, but when we were off the lanes, there were so many friendships. Mm -hmm. And, and again, I didn't get to bowl with Betty very much, but I would see her come to the Queens or I'd see her come to the U S open. It was like, she was one of my friends. I mean, I think that says a lot about a person. So Wendy mentioned Pat Costello, another great hall of famer. I remember meeting Pat Costello. And again, I'm bowling my first Queens event uh, in Florida and I'm bowling next to Pat Costello. She couldn't have been nicer. So again, it, it was about that watching how these these wonderful champions before me mentored and how they treated the up and coming people. And that to us meant, you know what, now it was our job and that it all comes together. And there's a reason um, why we all still keep in touch or when we see each other, it's like no time has passed. I think it's like passing of the baton. And I think it's our job to mentor the, the younger bowlers and make sure they know what to expect and how to feel and where they can go for help. Because without doing that, if Betty didn't speak to me, if Cindy ran a gorgeous friendship, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't be giving back to bowling the way I am. Yeah. So I think it all has a chain reaction. And it's because of where it started that we all still feel the way we do about bowling. Yeah, and, and that's a great point, right? And now you're the one paying it forward with all your, uh, you know, the kids that you're mentoring. That's that's it. Bowling truly is the sport of paying it forward. So uh, one of the things Carolyn and I talked about tonight was um, on the on the show tonight, we've got three players who have never won a PWBA title before. So, uh, Betty, how did you battle the nerves of trying to get that first title or that second title when you made TV shows? How did you do it? Well, basically, I think it was just learning to breathe. Because I think if you forget to breathe, sometimes you just do things without thinking. And so it was for me, it was to take deep breaths and to imagine uh, a good outcome and a little praying in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> that, that never hurt anything. Right. Yeah. There, right? yeah. Did, were you a nervous bowler? Did you get nervous or more excited? You know, I, I got so I got nervous and excited. And if I didn't, I knew it wasn't going to be good. Because yeah. it really meant a lot to me. And, um, you know, and, and I like to echo what Carolyn said, because I remember somebody asked me just two days ago about bowling on tour and, and you know, how was it with the older bowlers or whatever. And somebody said, mentioned um, Dave Sutar. And then the topic came up and they asked me about Judy. And I remember telling him, and I'll keep this really brief, is that Judy, they said, was she did she help me? Well, my goodness, when I first came out on tour, I threw a, a conventional bowling ball. Her and Gloria Beauvais took me in a pro shop, my first tournament, and and had the pro shop drill me a, convent, a, a fingertip grip. I'll never forget that. It was not something they had to do. It was something they wanted to do because they were, that's the way the bowlers are. That's the way the women's tour was. Oh, that's fantastic. That's a great story. Hey, when, yeah. Wendy, same question to you. I mean, you won the first tournament really that you ever bowled. So I guess it's super easy to get out there and do it, right? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> well, I, I'm telling you, what you what you know now makes it harder. I and mean, the more naive you are, the, the easier it is, I think. And Betty hit it right on the nail is that if you don't have – um, butterflies. Um, you know, my niece always talked about grasshoppers in her stomach. Um, if you don't have those, I don't think you're, you're, you're real. And I don't think you have a chance. I think you have to have it to be a champion. Uh, I definitely yeah. do. So was, was there, uh, maybe one or two professionals that, uh, helped you mentor you a little bit when you first came out? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I came out, um, yeah, my mother came with me my very first stop. And, um, you know, I was, I was quickly, um, as Carolyn said, I was, uh, we, we were, I was rookies were quickly, um, helped along and, um, there, there was utmost respect. It was always Miss Betty, Miss Judy, Miss Lori. Um, you know, you always, always, always told your, opponent, the ones that bowled really well, you always told them great bowling. Um, I think that lacks a lot nowadays. Uh, you know, you'll have a great day and, and people will walk by, right by you and never even acknowledge you. And I think that's horrible. But anyways, um, you know, we were mentored by all, by Betty, by Judy, 
um, Lori Nichols, um, Leila Wagner, Pat Costello. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, they were they were what we wanted to be. Dana Miller Mackey, you saw her, Alita Sell, saw her on TV all the time. You know, I started at the at the beginning of ESPN. I used to sit home in high school and watch live. TV events, and um, I wanted to be just like them. And they always were respectful, and um, they taught you grace, I think. That's great. Well, uh, as sad as this is, I'm afraid that we've really run out of time for today. Uh, I believe what this has done is only energize this group to have our Mount Rushmore back again very soon. So, <laughs> oh, there's, there's so much, yeah. there's so much to there's so much to cover and so many interesting things. Uh, because again, with USBC and Bull TV, we want to make sure we uh, don't lose sight of the past and continue to put that right in front of us. So, uh, for the panelists, thank you so much for joining us today. I wish we had another six hours. We could sit here and just talk bowling. So uh, I think that's going to do it. I'm going to let uh, Aaron take us out. Uh, Wendy, Betty, Carolyn, thank you all so much. Thank you. We'll thank you. Bye. 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 Thank bye, you. Betty, bye, Carolyn. Bye, Aaron. Bye. 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 Thanks, ladies. Yes. Thank you. All right, everybody. Uh, what an amazing moment. Uh, Tony, thank you for moderating there. That was excellent. Uh, a phenomenal discussion before we get going. Uh, but it's time. Step Ladder Finals is here for the PWBA Hall of Fame Classic, folks. Uh, we've had this on Facebook, but it's time to head over to BoldTV.com. you still got time to get your subscription to watch the live Step Ladder Finals. Uh, Carolyn and Tony are going to call the action. We're going to be there. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and we're giving away prizes, too. So uh, head on over. We're, we're closing up, but we'll be back on the lanes on Bold TV in just a moment, folks. So thank you again. And uh, remember, on Bold TV, bowling lives here. Oh, my goodness. And there it is. Wow, get the commitment to go. All right, everybody, we are back here on BowlTV.com. It is time for the stepladder finals of the PWBA Hall of Fame Classic at the ITRC in Arlington, Texas. Five great competitors, as Tony said a little bit earlier. Uh, three going for their first career title. Uh, it's going to be an exciting, exciting final on this 41-foot pattern. Uh, Tony, we just got a couple minutes left as they wrap up practice. We'll go to the lanes as well. But uh, what are you looking forward to most here? Well, uh, we're going to go for history one more time, right? We've got Jillian Martin as the number two seed, and that really is the story of the week and the story of the day. But uh, we've got, for the, for the first time in a long time, a lack of titles on the show. So your top five is number five seed Dasha Kovalova against Julia Bond. Uh, the winner of that gets Aaron McCarthy. The winner of that gets our 16-year-old Jillian Martin, followed by Lindsey Boomershine. Out of that group, we only have two with the title, Aaron McCarthy and Dasha Kovalova. So I think the really great story is we've got an excellent chance to crown a brand new champion today. I would certainly agree. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be very exciting to see how those players handle the pressure. We talked a lot about Lindsey and kind of the uh, advances she's made in her game. Uh, she's been in this pos position before and has had struggles. So... Uh, Carolyn, from everything we've seen this week, uh, do, do you think Lindsay is ready to make the next step and uh, put herself in position to win her first career title? Well, I, I do. I, I think she is. I definitely think she is ready because of what she did to prepare for this event. Like I mentioned earlier today, she really refocused, regrouped, looking at the two, 2020 season, which didn't happen. He has taken that a step further, had more time to really focus on that mental aspect and making sure that he processes what she's doing and doesn't get ahead of herself. And you could see that by the way she bowled in this event. She, she almost let it wire to wire. I mean, she never let down. She was winning matches with 190s, 180s. She was winning matches with 240s. That only increased that 
that spirit in her to make this her week. She put together an incredible 19 and five record uh, to earn the top seed. Uh, we've talked about Jillian Martin, the two seed, Aaron McCarthy making her second step ladder finals appearance here at the kickoff classic series as well, the three seed. But our opening match, Julia Bond, the three time regional winner versus Dasha Kovalova, the breakout star of the 2019 season, a Queens champion, shot a 300 on TV to win in Louisville. Uh, it's gonna be a great way to kick off the start of the event with two players with uh, a ton of young talent. For sure. And, you know, Carolyn, just to add on that, uh, I thought Lindsay said a really cool thing in the in the, in the post uh, uh, match play booth there. She said she hopes to finally be free. And that was really all she said. Right. So what's on her mind is getting the victory and just moving past that. So uh, right. I just thought the way she said that was someone it's it's winning is on her mind. And she showed it that she was ready for it today. So um, mm -hmm. I think she's going to be tough to beat. All right, everybody, looks like uh, lanes are turning on. It's time to head into our opening match. Julia Bond taking on Dasha Kovalova. So Tony and Carolyn are going to take it away. We're going to go off the screen for a second. But, folks, enjoy the Step Ladder Finals match number one here at the 2021 PWBA Hall of Fame Classic. All right. So, Carolyn, I wonder if uh, lane nine is going to be tighter again like it was the other night. I thought about that. You know, uh, it's been consistent with all of the patterns that right lane tends to break down a little bit earlier, cause the girls to actually shift off of where they were playing them. So it'll be interesting to see. I thought this pattern actually broke down close to the last pattern. Yeah, I think the expectation was this was definitely going to be a much more challenging pattern. Uh, and yes. the scores were all over the place. And I think that's what we're going to see tonight as well. Uh, it, I don't think it's going to take a whole lot to win most right. of the matches. I think from what you know, what you saw during the, the week and from talking to our uh, lane maintenance guru, two or three or four frames look great. Then you're lost for a couple of frames. So that's, that's probably what we're going to see uh, starting out tonight. We'll see how they break down. All right, so Julia underway with uh, a bit of a miss to start. The first shot's never easy, and we talked about we talked about nerves a lot with our uh, group of Hall of Famers. So we'll see how all that works out for everybody. Dosh mm -hmm. definitely has the advantage on experience. Oh, it looks pretty good. Ooh, it looks ooh, that looked good when she let it go. One of the strengths for Julia, and especially talking with Matt, and from when uh, when I watched the bowl for this event only, she really shut down her angles, and she's very good at that because she doesn't try to make that jump left too quick. Even though she gets normally around it and has a little more axis rotation, she still rolls it off of her hand. So getting in at times she feels her carry suffers just a little bit. There we go with the nice trip of the four. From the other show, if anyone recalls, I do love a good trip four. So that will always bring a smile to my face. Forget a flush strike. Those are boring. As we get ready for Dasha's a second shot, and folks, be sure to visit PW or shoppwba.com because the PWBA ladies full zip jacket is back in stock at a special price of $50 for a limited time. Get yours today and pick up additional merchandise at shoppwba.com. So as we get into this, Tonight, Carolyn, I know you and I are going to talk probably repeatedly about the number of games that all of our professionals bowled this week. So mm -hmm. I, I did some math. I had to break out the calculator, uh, very strong computers to help me do some calculations. But uh, for anyone who bowled all of the games, not counting the TV show, it's 66 games. You take the 66 games and then you throw on what I figured was probably about four hours of practice individually. Uh, within 
practice before the squads, uh, the two designated practice times, which, you know, hey, if you're going to go out and practice and everyone knows they're just going to be out there and chunking shots as fast as you can, you could bowl four or five games in an hour. So right. these, th- these, these folks are probably bowled close to 90 games in six days. Right. Uh, just an amazing amount of games that were not easy either. Lots of mental challenges along the way. So I think that as much as anything is uh, a lot of tired professionals. I think this format, as you can see, Dasha going just a little high. Looks like she missed left on that shot. But this, probably these three tournaments together, without, of course, the practice day was in between event, but this was more like a longer format. And this this would be something you would do every week when we used to bowl on the old tour with no days in between the rest. Yeah. So mentally, yes, it's always nice to have a day or two to regroup, but you didn't really have that here. So this was definitely a um, different factor, both physically and mentally. Yeah, definitely. A tough spare conversion right there, three, six, nine, ten. Not a spare anybody ever wants to leave. She leaves the nine pin. And we're pretty much all knotted up uh, going into the third. We'll see what uh, Julia does to come back. Super excited to see some some uh, talent on the show that hasn't won a lot. I do like it mm-hmm. when we see new talent and get to see new faces out there. That's what uh, that's what keeps it all going. Mm-hmm. Solid shot right there. Great comeback. Quick double. So she takes and the that, And that's a great shot of her hand right here. If you watch, very soft at the bottom, rolls it into the lane. He usually has a little more access rotation, but when I was talking to the ball reps, basically her key and Lindsay's key this week were actually trying to get a little more end over end, not as much around it, to allow themselves to keep the ball in play. And I think as you're going to see the transition, that's going to be a key factor. Perfect shot. So for someone to get it into the lane that smooth, Carolyn, what are some of the keys? Right there. You see it right there? You see that knee? You see that right leg on the ground? That right there is how you get that ball into the lane that smooth, as well as that right shoulder going down just a little bit, that tilted right shoulder. That right there is leverage and allows her to get that ball off her hand smooth into the lane. You're going to see a ball change here for Dasha. Quick. Went to a symmetrical ball. I think she was trying to blend out the lane a little bit. Yeah, that ball's got a lot of surface on it. Yes, it does. Finished a lot harder than she was expecting. I think she liked it at 40 feet, but didn't like the last 20. One of the things Dasha has been working on uh, over the break, well, I should say over the break, but one of the things Dasha has been working on, though, is uh, changing her angles a little bit. Believe it or not, for as much as she can look it, in my opinion, she has trouble opening up her angles, which I thought was so strange because watching her bowl, I'm thinking, just get it right. Yeah. Well, it's definitely going to come back. But that really is one of her, and I, and I don't like to call it a weakness. It's just something that she continues to work on. And right now, I think she does have to have a little more angle or she's going to make that move already to the left. Yeah. And it looks like she did move a few right there, but that was a great shot. Yep. yep. Uh, you nailed it, right? I think the key right now is being able to get the ball right off your hand to create some hold. This pattern – we mentioned is 41 feet, but it is really flat. It's one and a half to one. So when mm-hmm. you talk about a, a pattern with not a lot of oil in the middle, this is about as far as you can get away from a house shot. So right. being able to get the ball right off your hand just ever so slightly enough to create some hold is really the key. Got to hurry. It's a good eight. Hey, and for everybody uh, watching, if this is your first 
uh, telecast that you've watched for the classics this week. You'll notice uh, it's pretty quiet in there, and that's because we've got no fans. Uh, we've got staff, we've got some of the other bowlers, and we've got ball reps. So you can hear the ball reps really clearly in the mic, and I think that's going to be a really interesting uh, dynamic tonight, being able to hear how they pump up their players, keep their players going. I think that's pretty cool just being able to hear what they're saying. Good spare. As Julia moves to the second half of the game, folks, remember Storm Bowling is the leading manufacturer of high-performance bowling equipment. Visit your local VIP pro shop to pick up your new Storm bowling ball and bowl up a storm. Sizable lead for Bond. She needs to continue to stay out of trouble. Up 32 pins. Well, that was a quick 32 pin lead right there. Thought exactly. A the couple of opens. Yeah, the back to back opens by Dasha. Yes. Uh, the other thing Julie is very good at, and we'll watch this as, especially if she progresses through this match, is she does have a tendency to like to increase her ball speed. Great job. will allow her to play the lane where she is most comfortable. Getting down to crunch time for Dasha early here. She's going to need a strike. Narrow this gap here. How much is she going to move on this lane off that last shot, Carolyn? I would think she should at least be moving a three and one because that ball has a lot of surface. Although Dasha very rarely does her ball hook early. She clears the fronts pretty darn good. Yeah. Well, that but I'd say at least a three and one. That was close. Yeah. But then again, maybe that lane is starting to already hook. Already. A little earlier, only five to six frames in. That was something that Chuck Gardner mentioned on the on the broadcast a little bit earlier today, that uh, Dasha has uh, a unique skill to just get the ball to glide through the front part of the lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She does. She's. I'm going to tell you, she is so smooth into the lane, you would think that her ball would pick up. Seriously. I mean, you really would. But it doesn't. If you Very rarely does her ball hook super early. It just, she floats it enough to allow it to clear that front part of the lane, which is why I find it so shocking that she doesn't trust herself to open her angles. Uh. 7-10 split for Dasha, and that's going to make the deficit over 40 right now. So that is uh, it's getting late early. Yeah, that, and she missed left. I don't think she thought that was one of her best shots. One of her tendencies, and just talking with Chuck a little bit, is if she does get a little quick, she tends to come over the top of the ball just a little bit too soon instead of waiting on it. And that looks like one of those shots that just forced her to get it left. Let me, and the other thing is, and Tony, this is a great, and you can actually, you hook the ball more than I do, obviously, but with using that much surface, we'll probably see the lanes transition a lot quicker than with just the two or 3,000 of surface. You know what I mean? That looked like it had a heavy thousand on it, at least, and it, that tends to chew up the fronts just a little quicker. So you're, you're saying you're going to, you think that's going to impact the, uh, the games to come just based the on the, the I, I five to seven so. ball before that? All right, Bowl TV fans, time for our first giveaway. The uh, prize is going to be a bowling ball from Storm, bowling ball of your choice. So be sure to click on Submit Entry once you see it in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, I'll be counting down, but we will have one lucky winner of a Storm bowling ball of your choice. Good luck, everybody. I can't see the scoring, but I would think with the strike here, if she has this game pretty much well locked up, I'd say by the ninth frame, tenth frame, she should try something, just a different ball, see what type of reaction she might have. Yep, for sure. Doesn't get the uh, bird dog to hit the ten, but I think that's still pretty much about ball game. 
I was going to do the old Jason Thomas magic number. There we are. One left in the bank for Dasha. With the spare here, 155. She's pretty much well. She still needs Dasha will have to have them all. Uh, yep, Dasha's got to have them all, and yeah. she's got to have a little bit. So not quite ball game just yet. It's a shame, though. I keep finding myself quoting Jason Thomas. That's twice in the last 15 minutes. That, that can't be healthy. That's not healthy. Carolyn, is that healthy? Of all the people you want to quote, Jason Thomas is my guy now? Well, we've, we've been talking about mentoring. Do you feel like he's mentoring you? Maybe. I'm going to make a quick note on that and call him up, see if he's free on Thursday afternoons for 30 minutes of mental health for me. That's great. Could do that. Mentoring, not mental. Okay, mentor. <laughs> We'll try both. I'll take an hour, 30 minutes mentor, 30 minutes mental, and we'll see there which you one go. Is. There you go. That was a better shot. She definitely moved a, a little bit further left and got that ball a little right off her hand. That was much better. Yep. So that is going to take it. So even with a couple of opens, Julia's got this one covered. Shame for Dasha to have it all go downhill with the – the splits and the, the one miss fair. She shot 258, I think, or 256, 7, 8, the last game of match play to make it. It was a great battle between her and Diana Z for the last spot. Uh, both of them came up clutch. Dasha just had a few more, and it was really, really a great 250 game. And then you got to turn right around, take a couple hour break, and then bowl right on the fresh. So uh, definitely a tough transition. It was 255 to 227 that last matchup, uh, but was uh, came down to the final frame. Thanks, Aaron. It's like he's like our own personal Google. <laughs> you can just we can just say something that might be right or close, and he'll come just do it with another dynamite drop in there and clean up all our mess. It's awesome. Forget Jason hey, Tom. One, I'm, I'm going Aaron Smith for my mentor slash mental slash Google. I don't come cheap, Tony. <laughs> well, I'll see if I can't find a few quarters and dimes lying around here. We'll start start saving up. I think one of the keys for Dasha, though, is she really has worked a lot on her mental game as well. And she's never out of it. She keeps her composure. She's always in the hunt. And I think she's going to look back on this and say, you know what? This week was 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 a good week for me. She didn't win, but she's definitely going to take a positive away because everything she's been trying to put together, and we're going to talk about that throughout the night, has, is, looks like it's definitely coming together. Yeah, for sure. So I'm sure we're going to get a chance to talk to her here in a second. So why don't you lead off with that, and let's kind of see how she feels about it. Uh, for fifth place, she is going to pick up $2,500. So two shows for her this week, and I do agree. Great bowling, something to build on. How about the game of Julia Bond, though? Man, she flushed a ton of shots. And if you and that's you know what? Again, a great picture for all the youth bowlers to look at. Do you see how long she stays down with her shot until the ball hits the pins? She's posting for sure. Absolutely. Folks, this match officially in the books. Julia will advance to face one-time champion Aaron McCarthy next here on Bull TV at the Hall of Fame Classic. So like I mentioned, it'll be interest, interesting to see uh, when she makes the spare, she will try a different ball, move to a different part of the lane just to see, you know, maybe be a little step ahead of that transition. Because you are going to have Aaron McCarthy, who gets around it, probably going to be a little further left, Jillian, and Lindsay. Although Lindsay was trying to stay as far right and angle shut down as much as possible, until she had to make that jump. So we'll see if uh, Julia looks like she moved in a little bit. Got it right. Hard, hard to say on that one if she moved in at all. Yeah, and she might have she might have been getting trying to get it right to see how much room she had. Yeah, you're right. That could have went either way.
Tough one for Dasha. I'm sure she's happy that we have found the finish line here for this game. On to the next. Really was a great finish, not just this game, but in the last round of match play for Julia. She was ended up being the high average of a 215.2. Aaron McCarthy had the high average for really most of the day and yesterday as well by a significant amount, but uh, Julia just caught fire the last few games. So I think, you know, now we're going to get a battle of, to be honest, the, the, the two folks that had the best look from start to finish. Absolutely. Julie, who's going to go a little bit straighter. And then I think you've got Aaron, who's got truly the, as a, as more of a power player, the best way to combat it is to be able to get the ball right off your hand and float it really quick. And that's something mm -hmm. she does really well. So we'll see how those two lines of attack play out. All right, folks. Uh, game one in the books, Julia Bond winning 213 to 157 over Dasha Kovalova. We will be uh, coming back to our next match, Aaron McCarthy taking on Julia Bond. But first, we're going to play a quick ad from our friends over at Storm. We don't wait for opportunity. We create it. Create it. We don't work for recognition. We do work worthy of recognition. It's not about being perfect. It's about effort. It's about effort. We are Storm. All right, Tony, Carolyn, we're going to bring in Dasha to the show. So, Dasha, hello once again. Hi. Was it painful to watch? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never painful to watch you bowl at all, Dasha. Uh, what I would like to ask you, though, watching your practice regimen uh, via Facebook and, and chit-chatting, I know you've worked really hard on your game, as you always do, mm -hmm. yep. and, also your, and also your mental game. This was a long week. You made two shows. Tell us a little bit about how you trained and what that, what did, how did that lead you to making the two shows? Uh, well, I, well, since I moved to Michigan, I have a uh, opportunity to practice at Brunswick headquarters almost anytime I want. I even have a badge. Like, like I'm, I work here. I don't, but you know, it's nice to have a cool badge once in a while. Uh, so I just, I've been putting in work. I've been practicing almost every day, shooting spares, making sure my body will, it does the stuff it's supposed to do when my mind does not want to do that. <laughs> so um, just just practice, practice, practice. Make sure I stay on top of my game and understand my arsenal better. And I think it paid off in the long run, you know, uh, because I was able to endure the marathon. So that's pretty cool. So let's talk about that marathon, you know, just kind of figuring it out. You bold with practice and everything between 80 and 90 games over six days. How difficult was that? You know, since I lost a little bit of weight, it was easier actually than the last year's marathons. Like I felt I was able to repeat shots better and I didn't really feel tired until, you know, I took my shoes off and lay down to bed. And then uh, all the tiredness was just like, whoo, it was bad. But um, besides, you know, minor, uh, minor tear, rip and tear in my finger, it's, it's been pretty fine. So that's it, just one minor little rip on the on the hand. <laughs> well, also two rolls of tape on my body, but we don't have to know about that. <laughs> but you did, but th but that you know, I love when you talk about that. You did lose some weight. You work, work you do work hard on your game. You have the the uh, desire to continue to work even harder on your mental game because you knew this was going to be fun. Oh yeah. You know, what you made a ball change. Uh, Chuck had texted me. You made a ball change. Why did you make that ball change? Uh, to hero, I think because results didn't didn't give me the shape that I wanted. I'm a very visual person. I match the shape that I know the ball is gonna make to the pattern. Uh, like it could be completely out of a box decision, but because I think this fits my eye and I can repeat that, I would choose the ball. So um. The results did not do what I wanted it to do, so 
I switched to hero, but I think I started way too far right because for some reason on these particular pair, this was like game four for me when I would start. And I think it kind of, I was chasing the reaction and kind of bit me in uh, all the places. No, <laughs> you're so funny. I love it. Did you did you see the right lane hooking a little earlier than the left lane? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I did, at least in the beginning. And then I kind of was a mess. I don't remember anything. <laughs> Perfect. But I picked up my four pins. See, I learned from the last TV show. Watch out. Yes. <laughs> All right, Dasha. Well, we'll, uh, we'll let you go. Uh, excellent you. performance here at the Kickoff Classic Series two step ladder oh, finals. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we can't wait to see you again on the PWBA tour. Me too. Bye, guys. Bye, nice seeing you. Dasha. I'm going to go. Bye. <laughs> All right, there we go. We got uh, just a couple of shots left to practice here for Aaron McCarthy, who's going to take on Julia Bond next. Uh, so, you know, we talked about. Uh, uh, Dasha using a little more surface there, being a little mm -hmm. bit farther left, and you know, just thinking about um, thinking about uh, how Aaron will probably play even farther left than that. How do you think that's going to help her? And uh, for Julia, is that going to slow her down? You know, you know, you know I, there, Tony. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just kind of watching Aaron's practice, so she didn't really hit the pocket much until the last couple of shots. So she bring in ten on the left lane and flush the right lane. But if you Think back to what Dasha said. This feels like the fourth game of the block. So they're already going to start a little left. If Aaron picks up on that, and maybe she did on those last two shots, and she's not going to play it like the first of game two type of deal, and she starts left, I think that gives her the advantage, right? The, that being able to feed it to the right just ever so slightly creates the hole in this pattern, and that's where she had most of her success. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that right now, at least based on those last two shots. Yep, I, I, I agree with that. I think Aaron and Jillian the most will use that to their advantage to create the hold. I actually think uh, Julia and Lindsay may increase their ball speed to help them try to create some hold. Kicking off game number two. Good looking shot to start. And, you know, sometimes we talk about the moves that, that bowlers will make. And you know, we're sitting here going, hey, they should do this. or Hey, why isn't so-and-so doing that? You know, just like Dasha said, she looks at a shape, what she feels she can repeat. Sometimes the right move is not what you can do at the moment. Great shot. That's true. I think that was, that was, a, great, that was a great bit of insight from, from Dasha. The right ball doesn't always have to be the perfect ball. It has to be the right ball for you. That's correct. And if you see, that was another great shot with Erin. I love this new camera angle. But you can see Erin obviously has, a, is, has more access rotation than Julia. But you can see she's, she seems like she's lofting it a little bit out onto the lane because Erin can be pretty smooth into the lane also. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good. Blows the rack with the light shot. Yep. They're both looking pretty good so far, but mm -hmm. it's early. That's the thing, right? Can you throw more than three good shots in a row and have them do the right thing? It's it's early, and the lanes, as we know, continue to transition as we wait, as they throw shots. So who will be the one to keep up with that and be ahead in that move? The PWBA would like to thank its apparel partners for their continued support. These partners include Bullify, Coolwolk, EFX, High Five Gear, I Am Bowling by Logo Infusion, Chameleon Sportswear, Rift Apparel, and Vice Sportswear. That looked really good. That was a great shot off her hand. Let's look at her angles here. Well, I thought we were. There we go. Still pretty straight through the front. I mean, that is... That is a 17 to 14, 13 look. That she is not really getting it right at all very much. But again, one of the things with Julia is her ball speed. When I talked to Matt, he said she really is able to shut down her angles and she uses her ball speed to make that effective for her.
Got it up the lane. Good nine. She'll it's take terrible. nine on that all day. And see on the tight lane over there, I was kind of thinking for a second, maybe that was going to be okay to keep it in. But once it got just past the arrows, it took off. Cannot go. There has to be a little bit of belly. Even it on the definitely is, yes, I agree. And the thing is, if you look, the girls are not throwing it down the lane to the right. It's all in the front part, in the heads. They're really just creating that, like you said, that just the few boards lightly to the right to yep. create that angle to hopefully create hold. She didn't like that. Same thing, got to ride up the lane. That, not one of the things Erin um, has said too, she's been working on is she tends to, I don't like what Dasha does, she tends to get around it a little too soon. She doesn't wait on it. And then she gets, she, the way she says it, she gets a little yippy. You know, she, she grabs it a little bit more at the end than she wants. And that looked like one of those shots. And the miss on the 3-6-10. Hands it over to Julia. Spares. Spares this week were tough. I think we were shooting a lot of them, but also I think the just the fact that there were so many games, so much bowling, it's easy to get mentally tired, out mm -hmm. of sorts, a little lazy. But I definitely felt like I saw a lot of Miss Spares this week. It, I Again, I, you know, I mentioned it today. I reached out to the ball reps just to kind of get a different vision. And they said spare shooting was not going as well as planned for some of the girls. Um, and I do agree with you, Tony, as you see Aaron leaving, and I believe it's the 210. Um, I do think it is some mental fatigue without a doubt. But again, that's something where, and we talked about this today, that's when you really need to step aside and dig deep. I mean, you only have X number of games left. I know it's tough. I know you're tired, but you got to really dig deep to get through that, you know, those last few games that can possibly lead to a show. Yep. That's a good point. That's a good tip out there, everyone, from Coach Carolyn. Dig <laughs> deep. Don't miss the spares. So you're going for your first title. You start with a double. Your opponent starts with a double. Then your opponent has two opens. Then it's your turn. What are you thinking in a situation like that? I know exactly what I'm thinking of. Throw two more great shots. You know why? She's got to catch up. Well, that was one. That yeah. was absolutely perfect. I actually like her ball reaction on the right lane better than I do on the left lane. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be that little, again, she's a little bit further right, a little bit straighter, and her ball just seems to be motioning to the pocket, just perfect on that right lane. Yep. And on this pattern, again, 41 foot, they used mm -hmm. just ice oil. Uh, mm -hmm. Ice oil really is, as far as uh, slickness goes, the slickest oil. It mm -hmm. moves down the lane the fastest, and that really is, you know, it's going to be a challenge on lane nine all night long tonight because you've, You've already seen when you get it a little bit right, it doesn't want to make the turn. However, that was perfect right there. So. <laughs> but you know what? You on that shot, she did have just a little bit of angle to the right, right here. Yep. The last shot, she met, you know, when she had missed on and went high, it was left off her hand. So great shot. Would you consider that digging deep right there? I would say that's digging deep. And here's another thing: it's not like you have to make, make big moves. Maybe she just moved her eyes aboard right. Could come back. Yep. There, Eric's just, not going down without a fight. I can guarantee you that. She's not, but she's also down a quick 40. Yes. 
Pull TV fans, the new Brunswick Knockout featuring the proven Melee Core and Savvy Hook 3.0 solid cover stock is available now. Check out BrunswickBowling.com for more information. Flat 10. So with the spare, she's going to be down actually 35 pins. But Julia got a chance to really step on the pedal right there and put it away. I'm glad to see Aaron, well, I'm glad to see them all bowling well, but Erin is one of our first responders. She's a nurse. Yep. Works in three different units. So I I think it's great that she made the TV show. Although I love everybody who made the TV show. It's nice to see. It's almost like a little bonus for her. And uh, just wanted to say thank you for all she does because she'll be heading home for probably a 12 hour shift. Yep. Here, here, Aaron. Thank you so much. Tony, when you talk about the pattern, fresh every round, strip and reoil, your thoughts on that? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm not a fan. I think it's fine sometimes, but let's try and get as much of the lane in use as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, by not stripping and run, then you're going to get to see more of the lane. Um, right. I, I, I agree with that. And I, and I think you also see a different transition when you strip and re-oil every time, kind of like what you said. We're using a, an oil that carries down a little bit. You may see one lane transition different than the other, which is normal. Um, the backs tend to get tight. Like we saw lane nine seems to be a little tighter than lane 10. Um, I do. I, I agree with you a little bit. You see a little bit more of the lane as you let the lanes just continue to break down. Another great shot. I was getting ready to use your line, Tony. I was going to say she is just stepping on the gas full force. <laughs> <laughs> she is. I mean, she's up 45 she right now it's with, with four frames left. Okay. So here, Tony, do you remember we talked about this last week about girls that hook it and you're looking and going, I want to do that, right? Julia Bond doesn't hook the ball very much, right? Nice, great ball roll. The Maxis rotation constantly keeps the ball in play. What do we think is wrong with that? Nothing. I, absolutely nothing. Yeah. So that was just clarifying what you and I spoke about, where when we see the other girls hooking the ball and everybody says, I want to do that, just look where that break point is and make your game conducive to that shot. And you can hit the pocket all day. Yeah, for sure. Well, one more time. It's getting late early. Yeah, you think about the, the fresh, every squad, and that was the, you know, I had asked that question, and the comment mm -hmm. back from all of you guys was, women bowl on fresh, every squad. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, it's, uh, when you just think about rev rate, chews up the oil, makes the moves. On the, on the PBA tour, you can kind of play every single board, or you can play most of the lane in an eight-game block. So bowling on fresh every time for the men's probably not a bad idea because I'm not a huge fan of, you know, pitching it halfway down the lane either in order to find some oil. Right. Uh, th there is a happy medium in there somewhere. Uh, right. But, but ladies, I think the, the deepest I probably saw anybody at the arrows was 22, 23. So there's still significant amount of lane left for most. And I like to see, you know, I like to see what happens on that part of the lane as well. Agree. Aaron with a ball change. To something that hooks more. Looks like it definitely picked up earlier, that's for sure. Yep. So she's got 212 left, max score, 228 pace right now for Julia. So pace out, and Julia moves on to the teenage phenom. Bull TV fans, time for our second giveaway coming up next. A Brunswick knockout up for grabs. So folks, remember to hit submit entry once you see it, bottom left-hand corner of your screen. 
it's giveaway time here on Bull TV. Hey, Aaron, at the end of the match play, Ryan, I saw you guys gave away a Sonos. Was that a – what kind of Sonos? Was that a Sonos move? Do you know what kind of Sonos that was? Uh, to be honest, Tony, I'm not very good at technology, so right, I have well, no idea what it was, but just, it looked cool and it was heavy. I just, I just can't believe all the great things you guys are giving away. I thought it was a Sonos move. I was trying to click on the submit thing so I could win. A friend of mine, he's a big Sonos move guy, the J-Dub, and he – uh you know, he's been telling me how great it was. And I was like, man, you guys are giving away Sonos moves out here too. Ladies and gentlemen, Bowl TV, come get you some, folks. <laughs> Sign up. Post giveaways, giveaways. Crazy good items. It could be a slogan in the making in the future. That's right. Bowl TV, come get you some. Julia needs to make this. Woo! The old 2-7. Great great focus. You heard Matt McNeil say great focus right there. So, uh, Carolyn, so I, I said I, I like being able to hear the ball reps and, and in the background. As a bowler, do you like being able to hear them, you know, cheer you on, root you up as you're bowling? Um, I do, but I have to be honest with you. When I bowled on TV, I didn't hear much of that. I, 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 I heard the shuffling of my feet. Uh, I think I talked about this, I don't know, on one of our podcasts. I just, I was so tuned into what I was doing. I really lost such focus as to what was going on around me. It was all about just me and the lane, point A to point B. And the only only thing I ever remember hearing was the shuffling of my feet. And then, you know, you win a game or you lose a game, then you hear something. But I got to tell you, I just... Hmm, yeah. You're, it, it's amazing what you hear when you're so focused on a, a task. Yeah. Uh, but it is nice to know you always have someone in your corner that you can walk over to. Yep, for sure. So we got a little bit of interesting action now. So mm -hmm. still 212 left in the tank for Aaron, which would force a marking count. For Julia. Yes. Changes everything. But again, Aaron's got to have them all. And that's the way to get one right there. And she made a ball change last frame, right? So. Reminds me of the Liz Johnson ball change the other night. Exactly. Definitely rolls up a little oh, yeah. bit sooner than the ball she was using and is definitely driving through the pins. That's what Aaron likes to see. So same setup, Aaron's got to have them all to have a chance here. Ooh. Break there. It's going to give her 191 max, so Julia on the bench is going to move on. And you know, we saw that a lot last week, Tony, with this pair, that left lane. Remember when we talked about who was going to start the match? What would you do with your opponent? That left lane was the lane that everybody was leaving that flat 10 on. Uh, but as we heard from Brianna, she chose to go with the lane where she felt she had more hook. So it'll be interesting as you see these matches, what Jillian and what Lindsay choose to do. In that case, Aaron chose to finish on the left lane. Mm -hmm. So there was something to your point that she liked about it. Yep, but, but no one's no one gets the key strikes over there. You know the the left lane tougher to strike on also brings the light two ten into play. Oh, great finish, great ball change. It's no, definitely love the ball change. Yep. Carolyn, Tony, do you know what Alan? this means now? With uh, Aaron McCarthy being defeated, we are going to have a brand new. First time ever PWBA Tour Champion here at the Hall of Fame Classic. All right. Yes, we are. How exciting. Sixteen year old Jillian Martin awaiting in the semifinal and Lindsay Boomershine at the top of the step ladder will face the winner of that matchup. All right. Julia is still looking pretty locked in.
You surprised there she didn't try a different ball? Um, I'm trying to find out whether she did or not. That's number one. But it didn't look like she did. You are correct. Here, Here's the thing. I feel Julia has the, the game that will allow her to keep the ball in play if the lanes get a little funky. Okay? I think the other two girls like to hook it just a little bit more, even though uh, Lindsay did a great job in this tournament of really shutting down her angles. Julia's A game is to have her angles shut down. In pressure situations, you want to be playing your A game. So it's going to be key. That was another thing that kind of was going through my mind. Will, will Lindsay and, and Jillian be able to play their A game? And if not, you have to settle your nerves and come out from the beginning just like a fighting tiger. Final score, 213 to 191. Julia Bond defeats Aaron McCarthy. And before we get to Aaron, folks, Brunswick has been a proven industry leader for more than 100 years. For more information, check out BrunswickBowling.com. All right, so Aaron's going to take home 3000 for this one. Again, two shows for her this week. A, a great week. Great bowling all the way around. And with that, let's bring her into the show. So we'll welcome Aaron McCarthy. Where's my friend? Hi, guys. Hey, Aaron. Hello. So, Aaron, both of the, uh, and I don't want to say losers, both of the competitors that did not win their matches both changed balls halfway through the match. So how difficult is it out there right now to pick the right ball in the in the practice you get and then ride it through? Again, the ball you, you threw in the first six frames looked great for a couple of frames. The one you finished with looked great as well. How difficult is it out there right now? Um, I mean, it's pretty tricky, um, but especially on this pattern, shot making is important. And if I, if I had to rate my shot making for those 10 frames, it would probably be about a four or five, not the best. Um, so, you know, when you're halfway through the game and you're down, you know, why not try something new, even if it's not the, the correct choice? But I just felt like I needed to do something to end on a good note. I, I have a little off the cuff question on that one. Uh, you did you did as much practicing as you could before this event. Uh, we talked about you being a nurse on the front lines, company change. Um, how did you feel coming into this week? Um, you know, I was a little bit nervous. I didn't know really what my expectations should be or would be. Um, so I just kind of wanted to come out here and make some cuts and bowl as best as I could. And, um, you know, at the end of the week, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how things turned out. I think, so, I think you bowled great. Absolutely. You. Absolutely. Yep. You said your shot making was a four. How would you rank the week for you overall? Um, you know, probably on upwards of seven or eight. You know, my spare shooting was fairly good for the most part. My, my shot making was consistent. Um, today, I just really struggled. Even early on this morning, um, I would throw at least one or two just horrendous shots during the game, and I'd have to have to try and bounce back, and um, just not enough frames this last game to do so. Well, Aaron, uh, it was a tremendous performance here overall at the Kickoff Classic Series, a pair of stepladder final appearances. And uh, Carolyn mentioned on the show, but uh, once again, just thank you for everything that you do as a registered nurse over there in Omaha. So uh, keep up the great work, and uh, we can't wait to see you again on the tour. I appreciate it, guys. Bye. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. And that's so key when you're on TV. Uh, one thing Erin did tell me when she was texting me earlier today that she was able to refocus after a bad shot or refocus when she was down in a match. Um, we didn't feel pressure to make a ball change or, or make a hasty decision. She was able to kind of just breathe and make a logical decision. And she felt that that really, that reset button that she, she felt like she pushed really allowed her to stay in the hunt for that show. It's an impressive performance all week, uh, especially down the stretch there, uh, holding her spot in the top five. Uh, was there for most of the event uh, throughout the Hall of Fame Classic. So once again, a, another great show in there by Aaron. And uh, we see Lindsay and Jillian getting ready here. Uh, Jillian will be taking on Julia next. And uh, as we mentioned, for these three players, none of them have won a national tour title. Mm -hmm. uh, they do not have one to their credit. Julia has three regional titles. Uh, but this is the first time on the national stage for her. Uh, you know, we, we kind of talked about, uh, you know, being in that situation. You talked about, you know, wanting to have your A game going, uh, Carolyn as well. So, uh, you know, when you look at these three players, 
uh, you know, if you look at experience, it, uh, it it certainly is in Lindsay's favor right now. But uh, the fact that neither of are, you know, really, they haven't been in the situation before, uh, you know, what's going to be the key for uh, whoever makes it out of this next match? I think there's going to be a couple key factors. By the way, I'm going to show you some pictures later when we get back on. Um, I think there's going to be a couple key factors. Because of what we're seeing on the transition and the last two goalers who admitted they probably should have changed balls, it was the girls that like to go around it a little more that have seen the transition the most. I like Julia's chances. She's going to stick to her A game. She's going to keep those angles shut down. And again, she will use either her ball speed or keep those angles shut and just keep moving those parallels to the left. I think she will be able to control the pocket the, the easiest out of the three girls because Jillian and Lindsay, as you can see, even with their practice shots, tend to want to get that ball just a little bit right down the lane. And as we could see on that left lane, that the left lane is tighter on the back and that ball doesn't quite tip as hard as you can even see with Aaron leaving the flat 10. Excellent rundown, Carolyn. And just a few shots remain before Jillian and Julia will kick off here in the semifinal match of the PWBA Hall of Fame Classic from the ITRC in Arlington, Texas. The final event of the kickoff classic series. Shannon O'Keefe won the Bowler's Journal Classic to kick things off. Brianna Cote, a thrilling win at the ITRC Classic. And Jacqueline Evans taking home the win in the Arlington Regional. Who will be next? We'll find out soon. Going back to full screen here on Bowl TV. All right, so we've got our 16-year-old phenom, Jillian Martin. She's got her Kobe Bryant tribute jersey on today. Pretty awesome jersey. It's the Black Mamba on the back and the Kobe 824 Laker color on the front. So she said uh, in the in the post game, um, as it's been the one year uh, since Kobe passed away, that uh, felt like the right time to wear it and use a little bit of that mentality. I'll tell you, Carolyn, one other fun thing. Uh, last night when she got done, and again, I, no one's wanting to admit that we've heard so far that they're tired and worn down, which I love. They're showing a lot of heart. Uh, and that question was asked to Jillian last night, and she's like, no, I'm fine. I bowl a lot anyway, so it's no big deal. <laughs> right. Well, kids, you know, too, kids. Well, you know, hey, yeah, kids. You yes. know, too, though, um, when you're in the midst of the battle, uh, you know, even though you made the TV show, the TV show is not over yet. So the the, the tournament's not over yet. Uh, when you're in the midst of the battle, I don't think you're. I don't think your body tells you to get tired because you still have work to do. I think you can relax your body and try to get, uh, you know, re-motivated to get ready for that TV show. But I think you're still in that hyper mode, you know, the excitement of it all. So I can see why they may not be admitting they're tired. But I'm going to tell you, when Erin McCarthy and Dasha go back to their room and they lay on the bed, I don't think they're going to have any problems falling asleep. No, no. I mean, the blocks for the match play for this this event, like six-hour blocks. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Twin pairs all over, match play, four and a pair. Six-hour block, that is, under these conditions, that's tough stuff. It looks like some technical difficulties there, getting the arrows in the right direction. But uh, Director of Operations, Team Neil Milligan, on top of things, also a USBC Hall of Famer on top of that, too. And it looks like we are all set to go. Jillian. It sounded as though Tanil was getting some sarcastic claps there. So <laughs> business a little bit. Jillian, first shot on that left lane, definitely getting it a little further to the right down the lane. It will be interesting to see how that transitions because of what we what we have seen out of that left lane. Yeah, and wisely chooses to finish on the right lane, I think. 
If I were bowling now, I would probably finish on the right lane. Hundred percent. I would a hundred percent finish mm -hmm. on the right lane. The only way I would probably finish on a left lane is if I was playing hold. When when don't you do that though? Oh, I'm sorry. I've had, to learn, I've had to learn a little bit over the last few years that there's not always hold on some of these flatter patterns. <laughs> That's so true. There's I don't think this weekend when I bowled, I didn't have any hold. <laughs> yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you just, you have to, you have to move with the game. She's got out to a hot start every time. She has and It actually looks like she might've moved just a little bit left. Not much, but still see how straight her angles are just very I mean, she is getting it to the right, maybe three or four boards at most, and her ball is just smooth off of the end of the pattern. And that's where I think she has an advantage. Can you tell what ball she's throwing? I cannot, but I'm sending text messages to Matt McNeil right now. <laughs> it it kind of looks like a, a trend with surface or maybe well, a um, – I will tell you that Matt did say a lot of pearl balls, higher end balls with surface was uh, was the name of the game for this event. A lot of idle pearls were going down with a thousand on it. Um, so you may be right on the money with the trend. Andrew, but again, yes, but again, Matt was saying a lot of higher end, uh, higher RG balls with some surface. And that's another great tip for our viewers. You can put surface on pearl bowling balls to create a different motion. And Julia is using an idle pearl. So there you go. There you go. Slaps the 10. More bounce on that lane. She can be aggressive. Really impressed with Julia so far. Not a oh, ton of experience uh, on, the, on the telecast bowling for titles, and she's just been rock solid. The other thing about that, watch when she lets her ball go. You don't see her body move either, right? She mm -hmm. stays with her shot till the ball goes through her, goes through the pins. And uh, we're going to bring in Matt McNeil here for just a second, so to get a little rundown. Matt, when it's time, let us know. I guys, I feel like one of those golf announcers. <laughs> want to talk too loud because the headsets they drown your voice out so you don't know if you're talking too loud so i'm making sure to stay quiet to make sure we're being respectful to the players that's uh, an excellent job thank yes. you so julia has made a switch to the idle pearl from the last game uh the rubicon was hooking too much and it was just time to move left and the lanes were transitioning so we made that switch uh, in the in the tenth frame, and it's been paying dividends so far. Jillian's throwing a nuclear cell. I think both of them seem very comfortable. They got good ball reaction, and I think we're going to see a really good match here. All right, thanks, Matt. Hey, thanks, Matt. Uh, that's thank nice, you, Matt. Nice, nice call on the ball there. Three flush hits. I th I thought you brought him in because you didn't want me texting him anymore. <laughs> As you can see again from this great angle, I just love this angle. Again, Julia is playing her A game. She is making that transition from, as, as Elaine's transition, she is ahead of it, changing balls and making those parallel moves that are allowing her to play the lanes the way she likes to play them. And she repeats. That's even better. Repeating shots tend, just tends to have a positive outcome, I've heard. I haven't actually tried it myself, but it seems like a really solid decision. Oh, you probably do it more than you think, haha. -ha. Oh, gets the shaker. Tell you the light hits on that left lane. It's the only way to strike. To much better. Yeah, that's correct. Seem to be much better than the solid hits. 
Tour players naturally tend to migrate to those balls that offer more core torque and continuous motion down lane with minimal deflection through the pins. It was that logic that led it led to the development and creation of the all-new Roto Grip Tour Core designed for tour level players and those who aspire to score like them. Oof, great shot. That ball Jillian is using is a little bit stronger and it's an asymmetrical ball. So it allows her to, um, you know how we talked a little bit when the lanes get that wet dry, where the dry is really dry and the wet is really wet. This ball actually allows her to get it to roll smoother off the pattern in both directions. So I think that's why it looks so good. Of course, I don't think anything is gonna look bad in her hand anyway. Nope. There you go. Again, 16 years old, spare four bagger. And the fist pumps. Love the fist pumps. Picking up the right leg first, followed by the fist pump. I like, I like the fist pump with like the slam down. Fist pump. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally try that the next time I double, which could be a couple weeks. But if I do it, I'm going to really give it to him. I'm not going to give her credit, though. I'm going to say I thought of that move all myself. That's going to tilt a little bit. Oh, it didn't get the slap. Another great shot. Again, both girls keeping the ball in play. Got that one a little bit further right down lane. Didn't quite come up to the high flush like that lane's been doing. I mean, the balls just seem to be picking up right at the, the good spot on that right lane. Folks, we're going to have our third bowling ball giveaway starting now. Up next, a Rotogrip RSTX1 giveaway starting now. Click submit entry. Great spare. Lock solid on those spares. They better Gotta love it. Or Miss, or Miss CDB is going to get some bad added, bad bowler attitude if some spares don't get knocked over. No. <laughs> no, they would feel bad themselves. All knotted up right now, though, through five. Jillian will have a chance to take a 10 pin lead if she gets up and blasts the pocket like she's been doing. I look good. That's an this is such an impressive ball change. That's just uh, so many factors it takes, but you know, making it. You just win a match or you just win two matches with a certain ball, kind of make a blind switch after a couple of shots, flush shots, you know, five. Really? Every, really, she's flushed every shot for the most part. So really impressive. I don't think Julia, along with Jillian. Now, I think Jillian more so than Julia, but I don't think either one of them are intimidated by their environment at all. Don't I really know. don't. That's got a hold. Oh, yeah. It gets the tip. So that's what uh, that's going to be scary for everyone right here. She definitely got that shot in. It was a fantastic yeah. shot, but it was inside. Power player, they love that shot right there. But like we, but like we talked about, Tony, she has a lot of ball speed, and she's able to create the angle. She has both going for her to allow her to create some hold into the pocket. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And when you start to find out that you have a little miss area, oh dear. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Nice. I felt that one all the way back here in my home office. If you don't think she had a massive fist pump Ooh. hoop off set ready to roll right there, she had to put that back in the holster. Great shot, great shots. Okay. 
So she does not use a different ball for her spares. Thoughts on that, Ms. Carolyn? I see more people doing that now. Um, I I was never really able to do it. I didn't feel like I could repeat it. Um, so I opted for a spare ball. I think it's whatever you are most comfortable with and what you can repeat. Um, since the resurgence of urethane, I've seen more youth bowlers and actually more touring players use urethane to shoot spares. So I really do think it goes to what you can repeat and what that then will make you comfortable. Great job. That ties it back up. Again, she's moved in. She's about 19 and got that one out to about 12. 11, 12, but I could see off the screen. So she's got a, it seems like she's got just a little bit more room with this ball as she's making that move to the left. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's, it's looked absolutely perfect. She's got uh, 279. Julia has 279 left in the tank. Jillian has 269. This is the one she wants right here. Yes, it's a big hit. And again, Tony, light hit. That light. that lane's been the best for the light hits. Puts a tremendous amount of pressure on Jillian right here. Took a 10-pin lead, but again, at this point in the game where you've got the advantage on max score two, really, really stressful for a strike right here. Count's very important. Going back to her uh, championship appearance at the ITRC Classic, the nine pin was what she left in the ninth frame against Brianna Cote. Went on to strike out to force Brianna to mark in that situation. But Correct, yes. That was the one where she tripped the four and left the nine, I think. That one seems like she got, you know, it seems like she got that one in a little bit. It just didn't quite tip the way the last shot did. Yep. Great shot, though. Great Absolutely. shot. So now she, with the spare, she'll have 258 max left. So it's something we haven't talked about. And I, and I haven't even asked because I sent her, I talked to her a little bit on Messenger today. And I haven't asked her this. 16, going to be 17. Um, that's when Alyssa just now started looking at colleges. Now, who do you think's going to want her? <laughs> yeah, I've seen some chatter about that. <laughs> Every single team would like to have her. Yeah, I, yes. I, I just wanted to. Oh. Make a funny on that one. Oh, she got that one way right down lane. Yep, did not hit that one. Mm -mm. Just like she lost it too. Well, this is a must make. You got to go for it. With the spare, 244 is her max score. Got to make it. One of the things that she really worked on this week and especially for this last event, was tr not trying to make things happen. Just trying to calm her nerves and let the ball get off her hand. She said when she really tried to make things happen is when she felt like she, she just didn't throw good shots. Yeah. That's a learning. That's a learning, right? I mean, the fact that Absolutely. she recognized it. The fact that she recognizes it is really impressive. because Absolutely. I, I, and really, that shot there could have been – you know, again, we're far away from it. It's not like we're right behind them, but could have been just, a, you know, a little bit more firm because she's got great ball speed. I mean, it could be something so minor. But again, yes, for her recognizing it and something she's going to work on, it says volumes. Ooh, she, she looked like she didn't like that. And it no, and it, it just as good as the others. Eggs, correct. That shot all but wraps it up for Julia here. Max for Julian, 232. Even with an open, Julia is going to be in the 240s. Well, how about that game, Carolyn? I, I love this, but 
I'm going to tell you in, in Julie, in uh, Jillian's words, um, when she has to wait on the ball, she feels like she can do anything, which I think is kind of cool because going back to what you said, she even recognizes that. Aaron, did you say with an open here, she would shoot 240? That is what I said, yes. And then she went ahead yes. and 4 nine. God, I've heard yeah. you. I've heard you're dangerous. Yeah, uh, wait, no. all week, all week. Always Aaron. Always Aaron. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna bring him along the next time you've got a really hot competitive match going on, and <laughs> he can just whisper to everyone else around him to about what yeah. your opponent. Ooh, if she opens here. Yeah, I think this was a fantastic match, and you know Matt called it also said we were gonna have. A good match. The great ball change again. I mean, really, you had Dasha change balls. It wound up being close to the right thing. She recognized it. Erin McCarthy, ball change, definitely the right thing to do. You have Julia doing it. Again, these girls are so uh, much further ahead than the tour was 10 or 15 years ago in the knowledge that they have of not only their equipment, but mm -hmm. the lane conditions. And you see that as these scores are getting better and better on Tony, like we talked about, we did, this pattern was not forgiving. No. Pair to pair, this pattern was tough. Bears were tough and spares were a must in some games. So they're making the lanes now look pretty darn I don't want to say the word easy because we have one more match, but they're making them look very playable. There you go. And you could say uh, that they're easy as long as Aaron doesn't say it. We're fine. Oh, I we're know. Totally wow. It's going to be that like that. I see how. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Final score, 245 to 211. Julia Bond is going to face Lindsay Boomershine. One of them is going to be taking home their first career PWBA tour title. And uh, before we get to Jillian, uh, everybody, the good folks at Rotogrip, everything they do is to put you in a position to dominate. They make equipment that makes you your best because that's not your name up there next to your score. It's your reputation. Visit rotogrip.com to view, uh, to view their complete line of high performance bowling balls. And with that, we are going to bring in Jillian Martin, the standout here of the kickoff classic series. Hello again, Jillian. Hi. Hi, Jillian. Carolyn, take it away. All right, Jillian, I'm going to make this really, it's simple and it's about you. All right. You're, you're fearless. You're a phenom. You're doing all of the right things at the age of 16. I want you to sum up this, meaning the three events, sum up your tournament week. All right, overall, I thought it was a really good week, to say the least. Um, I think the first event, I was just a little bit nervous. Obviously, that was my third PWBA event ever. So it was just different coming out here and bowling against the best in the world. So definitely some nerves going on there. I think that's why I didn't finish as late as well as I would have liked. Second event, we kind of got through that a little bit more. I got to the step ladder. Still not exactly great. I think I, especially in qualifying, I had that one last game where the nerves just really got to me. This event, though, I feel like I really put it all out there. I feel like I bowled my best, and in the end, I just didn't come up with the win, and it is what it is. I like it. it, it I do have a little follow-up for that because you like to get in and, and get around them just a little bit. Do you think uh, Dasha, starting off the first match with a lot more surface, helped break down the lane to where you like to play them? Yeah, I would say it probably did. I knew it was going to be iffy on whether or not I could throw that ball, but I actually had to put less surface on it than we had thought, so I would agree it probably did. Perfect. I, I'm proud of you. You're great, and I can't wait to see you in March. And, um, yeah, we're just talking about – I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm throwing one more question. I don't care. Okay. Any colleges on the horizon? I mean, uh, not really. <laughs> we still got a little bit of time. I would say top six right now are, in no particular order, Wichita, Vanderbilt, Nebraska, McKendree, North Carolina a and and, oh my gosh, I forgot one. No, I didn't. Vanderbilt. I'm just kidding. I love it. I love it. I, I think anyone would be honored to have you. You're a trailblazer. Believe it or not, at the age of 16, you are a trailblazer, and you're going to be a phenomenal mentor for the up-and-coming girls. You go get them. 
It's all about you. It's all about you, Jillian. All right. Jillian, uh, it's been so amazing to watch you this week. Uh, we've had uh, so much fun watching your progression through these events. And uh, I, I think you might be one of the new fan favorites on the PWBA tour, <laughs> even though you're a few years away from joining the PWBA tour. Yeah, just a but, few. But uh, what's, uh, what's on the horizon for you in these uh, next upcoming months? Um, definitely some SYCs. The PBA Junior National Tournament is in the middle of February as well. And some local EYTs, JTBAs. I'm going to bowl what I can, and we'll see. But just a lot of practice, just getting back out on the lanes and doing what I know how to do best. Awesome. Congratulations, Jillian. It was a pleasure to watch you bowl. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Jillian, we'll let you go. Take care. And once again, just an unbelievable week. Uh, it was so awesome to watch here at the Kickoff Classic Series. Uh, you and your dad take care, and we'll see you guys soon. Thank you. All right, Jillian Martin. <laughs> Back-to-back -back awesome. finishes of second awesome. and third on the PWBA tour at 16 years old, folks. That's what we've just witnessed here. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's so cool. But uh, before we get back to the action on the lanes, uh, practice time right now, we're going to go to a quick ad from the official lane maintenance provider on the PWBA tour, Kegel. How do I play this pattern? <laughs> you gotta love JJ there. I he, love he, him. He's, he's just so great. I mean, and 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 a great bowler in his own right. I mean, the guy is a great bowler and just phenomenal. Absolutely, we had him on the uh, broadcast a little bit earlier. Uh, over the course of this week. So thank him. He, he gave us a little rundown of, of one mm -hmm. of the patterns as well. So big thanks to Double J and all the folks who have uh, visited us here on BullTV.com. It's been a fun week uh, talking to Hall of Famers, great folks throughout the industry, great bowlers, uh, great people. It's been a, a fun week. It's almost been like a, a big old family reunion, except with a lot of bowling involved. Uh, so we appreciate that. And uh, folks, we're just moments away. Lindsey Boomershine against Julia Bond for the title at the PWBA Hall of Fame Classic. One of them will win, win their first national title. Will Julia run the ladder, or will Lindsay come through from the top spot? You know, that's what uh, that's what I was told by, by Nick Hoagland today. He said, if a stray player gets loose early, they could run the ladder, and that's basically what we're seeing. Julia with the very direct down-and-in strategy, changed balls a couple of times. And she's looked absolutely brilliant out there. The other part of that too, Tony, is and we've talked about this. She has how many games under her belt on this pair already? And she yeah. knows the characteristics of the pair. Again, we're going to see what Lindsay, Lindsay chooses to do. But, you know, Dell and I have talked about this many times. Would you rather be first or second? Yeah. And, and there's so many times you're going to go, well, first, because if you lose, you only finish second. But then you're thinking to yourself, but if I'm second, I get a game under my belt. And there's so much that you learn from those games to make faster decisions. It's going to be very interesting to say. Tony, who, what would you do? If you were Lindsay, what would you have Julia do? Uh, you know, if... I purely go unless it's some easy to tell challenge that the opponent has with a lane. I go with what I like, and I'm just going to pick whatever lane I like the best to there get the go. death okay. frame on. Period. Okay. If it was clear to me that Julia really liked one lane more than the other, maybe that's a different story. But Correct. she's she's shown to be locked in on both lanes. So as, as a straighter player, I probably would I would choose to probably uh, end on the lane that maybe hooked a little bit more, which would have been the right lane. I had mentioned that. But I agree with you in this situation. I don't think Julia has a bad lane because she has that light hit on that left lane. 
But we'll see out of Lindsay. Lindsay's tried the last couple of shots, playing them a little straighter. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see which one she chooses because she's really worked on putting all of the parts together, and she proved that she belongs here this week. For sure. So going back to your comment on the, you know, first uh, top seed, second seed, you got mm -hmm. 20 pro titles. How do you, what do you think your record was from the top seed? Not as good as I would have liked it to be <laughs> <laughs> because I lost two major championships as um, leader and uh, I bowled well, uh, obviously not well enough, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I won as much as I should have from the lead. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She's loose and underway now. Got the first frame out of the way. Hit the pocket. Good shot. Now it's time to step on the gas. With products for bowling centers, coaches, and mechanics, Kegel is truly built for bowling. Visit Kegel.net to learn more about all they do for our great sport. spot and that will not strike in that lane from yep, good, good shot by Lindsay keeping the ball in play that was her game plan all week again she likes to go around them just a little bit she is not getting it as far right as she normally likes to she is really keeping the ball a little bit more as she would say in front of her end over end so she's allowed to keep the ball in play that was her game plan all week and I think it's smart But getting back to what you said, Tony, it'll just be manipulating something or a ball change to make sure it gets through the pins. Yeah, and there's certainly no reason to freak out over those two shots. Those are great shots. They didn't strike. Nine spares, perfectly fine right now. We've seen, for the most part, every game, Julie has got out to a solid start with some strikes. So... We'll see if the pattern continues. Oh, God, what a great shot. Could be seeing a little bit more of the transition. This great shot, perfect off her hand. Just like she ended the last game. This time she leaves a ring 10. Tony, you leave a ring 10 after just shooting a big game. Only the second frame though. What do you do on, next time you're up on that lane? Do you change anything? Probably not. I'll throw it back in the same spot. Well, I probably won't throw it back in the same spot, which means no. I'll probably try. You'll try. I'll try, but it's probably not going to go back in the same spot. It'll probably go half pocket and destroy the pins. Or okay, I'll, I'm, I'll probably just triple. I am going to throw it close to the same spot. <laughs> you will actually throw it on the same spot. No, I, I, I don't change. Not, uh, you know, if it if the lanes were hooking a lot and you could really see it come in late, maybe. But that's mm -hmm. just a. Uh, on this pattern, that was just a great shot that got unlucky. Right. I agree with you. I throw the same area, and then after that, I make a, a decision. Boom. She's put on a clinic tonight. 
She's moved just a little bit further left on that lane. Looks like she's laying it down now around 17. Kind of hard when you're looking at the screen on a laptop, but I'm thinking it's about 17. Yeah. And you said earlier when she started, it was around 12 or 13. But they're getting it out, so right. So she's moved at least five, five and a ball mm -hmm. change tonight. Yes, correct. The PWBA would like to thank its accessory partners for their continued support. These partners include 3G, BowlerX.com, Dexter, Eileen's Bowling Buddy, Genesis Bowling, Master Industries, Robbie's Turbo Bowling Accessories, Ultimate Bowling Products, and Vice Grips. It's got to hurry. Good shot. It's a good spot to put it. Good spot to put it. It looks like a pearl high road with a lot of surface on it. She likes pearl high roads too. Yeah. Um, looks like she got that one way down the lane, and a little bit further to the right, but with the surface, just allowing it to be smoother off the pattern. And I, I like that look. I, I do. And it's worked for Julia, as we can see too. So both in the right part of the lane, just need to make good shots. Yeah, the good thing is, right, they can just be real clean with it at the bottom. Yep. And, and that's, you know, they're they're both locked in on that right now. You know, that's what happens when you've pulled so many games and uh, you feel comfortable on the pattern. Mm -hmm. You can do something that maybe normally you might try and catch it more at the bottom, but they're just being super soft and letting the ball do the work. Pretty good. Oh. <sighs> What a terrible break! Yep, first seven ten. That's been the that's been the the bad luck hit of the week. First one we've seen tonight. One of the keys for Lindsay is making sure she gets her ball into her swing, and she she looks strong. She looks good. She has worked really hard, and and she looks confident. And that just that's just a bad uh, bad break. Yep. Gives up a couple pins there. So I'll, I'll go back to you on that. So that's two half pocket hits that did not strike for Lindsay on the left lane. Would you make a move to the right? I would definitely make a move. And I would probably, the way I see that left lane, I would probably move my feet and not my eyes. Okay. Because this pattern – for and I hate to say that the girls that bowled well tonight, obviously Julia, if you even see it, Jillian wasn't getting the ball way right down lane. That angle in the front was just very slight. And I think that's important. So big moves were not necessary. It was more of the ball changes and just paralleling everything. There you see, she's catching the light hitch. We got that one way right. This gets out to about, wow, seven, eight. Yep. Just rolled just enough off the pattern again that goes back to again the tip you can put surface on pearl balls to allow it to give you a different ball motion clean through the front going to be a little bit smoother on the back perfect our final giveaway is underway xbox one s pick up a xbox one s click submit entry She's going to look back and say that was probably one of the best shots she threw all night. You could see how she just nailed it, came through it super hard. Yep, and just didn't get that one. That was one board right of the tracer down lane, high flush. And again, does not look like she's manipulating her hand or anything. All she has done, ball change, chase transition. Keep it simple. Now Lindsay has gone. Lindsay has gone light, flat ten on this lane, right? No light. Light seven pin. Light, light seven, seven pin. pin. Sorry, that's what it was. Okay. But, but yeah, both. And were then light. light, and then the light strike. Yeah. We'll see if she makes a change. That looked pretty solid there. Ugh. Great shot. Great shot. Another bad result. So through five, she's down thirty-five pins right now. 
And right here, another good shot of Lindsay. And I, I rather said that when she was really at the release point, Lindsay has worked hard on making sure her hand stays behind that ball just a little bit longer before she gets around it. She likes to get around it. She's got a lot of axis rotation and she has really worked on making sure she can get that ball a little more end over end to be able to control the pocket. And that was crucial for her this week in being successful. Great conversion. So I wonder if she moved on the right lane. You think she did? Moved right a little bit? Because that one was flush. The other two were light. Either that or it looked like she might have even thrown it a little harder just to keep it in front of her a little bit yeah. more. We need to uh, get our little lane mapping <laughs> with no. our numbers on it. No. Aaron, can you work on that? Can you get that for us? Oh, I'll see what I can do. There we go. Looks like she hit that one a little bit. Give it a little bit of extra juice. So right she's here. got 35 left. Yep. Looks like she got it down lane to about, she's a little left of that uh, second tracer, but carrying the light hit. And as we've seen, really Julia and Jillian are the only two that really went high flush until Aaron changed balls on that left lane. But the light hits have been carrying. Mm hmm Another great shot. See, to me, that one looked like she didn't have as much on it. I mean, it was just very, very soft at the bottom, but kept it in. So I was uh, thinking it might not hit, but it just uh, right now she's just got the perfect reaction. Nope. Like like Matt said in, in the beginning of this tournament, when they saw the transition and when she had to get in, she she became a little uncomfortable because it forced her a little bit out of her norm. So what they did was they used, like we have been talking about, higher RG balls, manipulated the surface a little bit to allow her to bump just that little bit back to the right and be soft at the bottom and do her A game. Another good shot. Yeah. Help that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, she may have started from the bottom tonight as the four seed in the first match. But again, she did have the high average for the week. So uh, she uh, she's had the reaction across the house in all phases, to your point. So nothing, nothing to complain about there. So it is a 44-pin lead for Julia, but with a couple of strikes here, Lindsay gets right back in this game. Correct. These are some key shots. I need to put a little pressure on Julia. She obviously has had some games under her belt. So this would be the time to say, you know what? I'm here. I led. I want it. I believe you mentioned digging deep today. She she has done she has <laughs> she has dug deep uh, plenty of times to get herself to the show, and she's been knocking on the door. So you're right. This is the time where that definitely comes into play. There it is. All right, picks up ten right there. Yep, soft at the bottom again. Gets it a little bit right down lane, but carries the light hit.
Same process you heard. Deep breath. Yep. Lindsay has worked the last few years, you know, just talking to her, um, you know, after some of her shows, she's worked hard on putting everything together and, and making it a process of being positive, having perspective, and really saying, you know what, I belong. I want a title. And I think I work hard enough and, and I want to go out and get it. She does belong here. You don't lead tournaments just on a whim. Her best shot of the game right there. Back to a 24 pin lead. Again, she still has 235 left, 259 max for Julia. Great shot, perfect execution, and got the slap 10. That one, her angles were much straighter, did not even get right of that tracer down lane. Could not ask for a better shot to apply some pressure. That's great. When you guys talked about digging deep for Lindsay, uh, looking at her previous TV appearances uh, in the past on the PBA tour, she's made it five times, previous high game of 190. Uh, wow. So it looks like she's going to surpass that here. But I, I think those shots are big for her confidence, regardless of the win moving forward. Wow. Absolutely, 100%. Oof. Almost a 7-10 there. Right. Got the late tickle to knock it down. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. The super slow-mo here to see what happened with the 7. Yep. The 5 Oof. shoves it out. Exactly. Oof. That keeps the door open for Lindsay a little bit. Not a ton of room, but there's room. There is. I like two. it when we I like it when we get some good photo finishes for a title. Yeah, two and two and a half frames is a lot of frames <laughs> when you're on TV. Is this when it gets the most nerve wracking as a player? I think so, especially in the title match. You know, I'll tell you the only time I really I was not a score watcher. I really wasn't because I could add it in my head. Uh, you know what your opponent has. Mm -hmm. I mean. Well, I should say not everybody because I don't know if the youth bowlers add as much as we did, but um, I could tell what the opponent had and where I was at. And the only time I really looked up is probably that eighth frame because I felt, you know, you're coming down to the wire. Just double check yourself in case yeah. you weren't right. Uh, but other than that, that's, you know, it was all about just throwing good shots. Good shot. Ooh, looked good off her hand. Yeah. That follows the ball in the last shot on that lane that went a little bit high for a nine pin. Mm -hmm. So looked like uh, just a little bit more friction came into play there. She she definitely got it left. She definitely had more on it, and it read quick. we got us a ball game now. She doesn't have to bowl on that lane again, but I'd like to know if she made the, what move she made off that nine pin yeah. because that nine pin was in a little bit and 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 hooked. So, you know, that might have been one of those three in ones where you need to move a little more with your feet because now there's obviously that little bit of friction. So here's how it lays out. It's 222 max for Julia, 235 max for Lindsay. Lindsay can close it out, but she definitely needs this one to at least apply some more pressure for Julia. Oh, great shot. Big shot there to set it up for the 10th. You can shut Julia out. Yep. She took a three-pin lead right there. So she goes nine spare strike. Then she'll force Julia to double to win. Count's going to come into play. A lot of things come into play. But two strikes will get her name on a banner. Well, actually, one strike and eight spare is going to get eight it on the
I think she got it in. Just a little bit. Kept her bull speed up on it. Yep. Needs a spare. Yeah, I don't think she liked it, but I think she liked the fact that it got yeah. nine. I think she had uh, designs on that being worse than that. But Total, totally agree with you, Tony. I, you know, missed just a little bit left, but again, she used her ball speed the last two days to her advantage. Got the four pin break out of it. She needs to make the spare to force. Uh, she makes the spare and strikes. She forces. Yep. Well, you a double. Still in good condition, right here. Yep. First things first, the four pin. Oof, all right. <laughs> Good work there. Down is down, they say. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have, matter. You don't have to run over it. Just touch it. All right, so she needs a nine count right here to force the double. We've got a couple of photo finishes here, Carolyn. I like to see that. I do. It makes it exciting. My hands are sweating again. I know. Oh, because it's her first title-ish. You know what I mean? Yep. That's so cool. Like, you don't ever forget that one. Oh, that's not good. Six gives her yeah, two seven ten. or six. I can't see. Six, two, ten. All um, right. So that makes it uh, considerably easier for Julia. Now Julia needs the 19 in the 10th. Some kind of 19. Some kind of 19. Oh, that was a tough break for Lindsay. Yeah, and I didn't – I have to be honest with you. I was looking at the end reaction. I didn't really – See if she missed a little left, but she did go high. Um, and that lane probably is breaking down, but you know, you're trying to just get the most count you can to put the pressure on. So, yeah. There it is. Perfect shot. She was very aggressive on that one. She definitely had, I'm going to tell you right now, Matt McNeil called it. She used her, her, Speed to her advantage. That lane started to break down just a little bit. So whether she made a move, it might have been just minor. But that one, you are right, Tony. That one was full force aggressive. Nine on two balls for her first title. And the $10,000 first prize. Oh, should be proud of that one. That was absolutely perfect. Both of them. You couldn't throw it any better than that. Those were nope. two perfect shots to yep. win your first PWBA title. She came, the, she came in with a game plan. She was the high average for this event. She used her ball speed to her advantage. She used minor moves on the lane and used higher balls with surface that she said gave her the look she wanted. Hmm. Great finish. Really, really tough, tough finish for Lindsay. It feels terrible for her on that. Not the way she wanted to finish. Definitely not. Uh, it's just a bad break. Uh, she had the seven ten, uh, you know, in the early in the game. Came back, made some key shots. That put pressure on Julia. It just uh, the, the the wave turned in Julia's favor. And look at that packed house at the ITRC. <laughs> 
seven people go crazy. All right, folks, we have Julia Bond, the winner of the 2021 PWBA Hall of Fame Classic, now joining us here. So let's bring her in. Julia Bond, you are a PWBA National Tour Titleist. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, what did you think about those two shots in the 10th for the title right there? <laughs> you know, couldn't have thrown them better. You know, I tried to, to be as calm as possible and put everything into those shots. So regardless of the outcome, I knew that the effort was there. And so did the you, results just had to come. Did you do anything different in the 10th or just uh, try and be aggressive? You know, from watching it, it looked like you just really aggressive on the first one and it was perfect. Yep, that was exactly the plan. The right lane is the one that I felt the most comfortable at the time. The left lane, I started to just be, you know, a little unsure. So the right lane, I didn't have to do too much. So that definitely was in my favor. Yeah, I talked to Matt a little bit during the week. You've used your ball speed to your advantage. Uh, what else did you really work on before you entered these events? Um, again, ball speed was definitely a really, really big one. Like you said, there was times in my rookie season where, you know, they would get so shimmed up, you know, just from the ladies playing in the same spot. And so I really struggled with that wet dry. And so that balls, you know, controlling my ball speed because, you know, my revs aren't super high. So I kind of have to find other ways to kind of trick it a little bit. So speed was definitely a big component for me. And I, I think we have another prize for you for just using the the, the term shimmed up. We're <laughs> all week for somebody to say shimmed up because there ain't nothing shimmed up at the ITRC. Um, <laughs> made them look shimmed up in the 10th frame. So that's great. So all you bowlers, go go Google shimmed up. Aaron, don't look it up. All right. So Julia, <laughs> first time Titleist, you won it in dramatic fashion and you earned it absolutely 100%. After you got the second one, the 10th, what, did, what went through your mind? Finally. <laughs> Oh, you know, that's great. It's just, you know, my, my rookie season was good. You know, I had a lot to be proud of, but there's also a lot of things that I needed to work on. So, you know, with COVID, putting a pause, that was definitely frustrating. So to work on those things and to learn and to come back and use those things and have, you know, everything kind of come to fruition was really, really nice to see. You know, just super proud of myself. I'm very happy. It should be. I think it's awesome to watch. You're you're super simple, and I mean that in such an awesome way. Uh, we've talked about it. Uh, you don't have to hook the lane this much, and and you proved tonight that making the simplest adjustments and using some of your strengths can lead to a national title. Uh, again, another star for the future. You're going to see her in the winner's circle again. Thank you, Carolyn. Now, now, CV, I want to go back to something you said during the match, and you, and you felt mm -hmm. that Julia was going to be able to play her A game uh, throughout the course of the staple letter as as the lanes transition. And Julia, did you feel you were kind of in command of that A game throughout the course of the uh, entire run? Oh, for sure. Like, definitely to start, I am very good at playing tight angles. That's something that I've always been comfortable with. And then, again, that was good for the first maybe, you know, Two games, maybe a game and a half, really. Towards the end of the second game, I kind of – my ball started getting a little lazy, I thought, so I kind of had to bail on that plan. But with all the things that I've been working on and having the lanes open up, again, I'm also comfortable doing that, you know, having just a small, you know, just opening up. And so, I, again, I, I definitely felt like, you know, it, it, it was just a matter of just good shot making and being patient with myself. Excellent. Oh, great advice there. Being patient with yourself. And by the way, I also made a, another comment and you will remember this 10 years from now. You will never forget this night. Oh, 100%. You're right. Hey, uh, do you have any uh, shout outs you'd like to give? Yes, of course. I would like to thank Storm, Turbo, and Chameleon Sportswear for, you know, all the equipment to make me feel the best on the lanes. I definitely appreciate all the support. I like to thank my parents, Daniel and Sonia. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here. And, you know, you know that I'll tell you that all day long. Um, also, uh, my boyfriend, Andrew, who's been, he's not a bowler, but he's been keeping an eye on the score. So I'm very <laughs> proud of him and very happy that he's been doing that. And just all my friends here, you know, it's, it's, it, times are weird, but for all of us to come together and uh, again, big shout out to the PWA for how they, and, you know, in the ITRC, it was definitely a team effort to come together and be committed to the plans and the protocols that we have. So really without all those people, we wouldn't be here. So thank you. Excellent. Well said. All right, Julia. Well, we will let you celebrate that win. And, and I have to ask, how's that for an early birthday present? 
Oh my goodness. I even forgot about that. I turned 25 <laughs> on the 28th and thank you. Yes. That is, I, I don't need anything now. Like this is. So you said, you said you turned 25. Yep. I'm turning 25. So you can finally rent a car. I know that's something that we've been talking about. The there you go. Birthday. I'm excited. I might, like I was talking to Sydney Brumman. We were talking about because she her birthday's two days after mine, mm -hmm. and she was talking about renting a car just for fun, <laughs> you know, just to do it, just because we can. We'll make sure it's a Ford Mustang. Done. Good advice. Done. <laughs> there we go. Well, Julia, congratulations once again for winning the PWBA Hall of Fame Classic, your first national tour title in impressive fashion. Uh, congrats. Enjoy the night, and uh, we can't wait to see you again on the PWBA tour. Thank you so much, guys. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. All right, Tony, Carolyn. Hmm. Yes, we did, it. we did it. We did. We did. We did Just so, did so yeah. pleased to uh, get uh, a new Titleist. I love, love it. To see new talent, it's get the it. opportunity and get it done. They're out there. They're ready to go. You can tell by those two shots. I mean, she threw a thousand good shots tonight, but the two in the tenth. I mean, that's. They were perfect. perfect. They were perfect. You, I mean, look, if you're going to, she said it, she said it perfect. You had to get out there and give it your all. I mean, you're, you have to mark, right? You have to yep. fill a frame. So you can't hesitate. You have to give it your all. And she did. And it was perfect. Just perfect. I was expecting, Aaron, what do you think? I was expecting to see and hear a little bit more emotion from her after getting the title but she walked over and spoke so confidently and not no break in the voice nothing just total confidence and acceptance that is somebody who is ready to win and was expecting to win right she's had that success uh looking back to junior gold in 2013 has had success in junior team usa collegiate so she's hit all the stepping stones getting up there uh we do have lindsey boobershine joining us next so we're going to get a chance to talk to lindsey uh, so, Lindsay, welcome back to the show. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lindsay. Hello. Hi. Okay, I'll start. Lindsay, okay. I think you, I think you bowled great. You bowl, you did. You bowled great this whole entire event. I mean, all three events, the series, whatever they're calling it, right? Um, you left the seven ten on the left lane, and then you made great shots. First thing I'd like to know is. What did you do? Did you move, just cut down on your angles? What did you actually do to create the look you needed? Um, I just tried to roll it more because that's what I've been doing all week. Um, you know, I didn't want to give the pocket away. The first one in the 10th was a little slow. I got a little around it, um, but I thought I was going to hold. That's what I played all week was the hold. I didn't play the hook. Um, so I really wanted the first one, um, but... I mean, no joking aside, but this is funny. I mean, I didn't miss a spare and I didn't shoot 130. So right. I, I mean, here we go. Okay. <laughs> so, so this is a positive. We're moving on. Well, because my follow up question, now that you've kind of said that, on the fill shot, mm -hmm. um, did you move off the four pin or did you think you just threw it harder? What, what, what was going through your mind? Because I'm, did you look at the score? I did. Yeah. Okay. So what was your, what was your thought process? Well, I didn't want to give away the head pin. Um, I didn't want to get six, but I did move because that, that lane nine has been hooking earlier all week. I didn't want to give it too much away. Um, and I should have moved more. I, I, I think, um, not, now knowing that, um, and that was, you know, my error. I moved two. Um, and I just kind of wanted to keep it, you know, at the one three, cause I knew that she'd have to get count. But like I said, I really wanted that first one because I knew that was putting me in the two twenties and that she would have to double. Um, so at that point, um, you know, I, I didn't want to get six obviously, but, right. um, I wanted to just not give the head pin away. That's been my mentality all week because it's 41 feet. There were so many twos, two to twos, you know, um, across the lane that if you gave it away at all, like, I mean, it was say Livy. So that was kind of my whole thing. Um, and like I said, I should have moved more. I think you both great. I think you're throwing it great. I think everything you've worked on and, and put it all together, we we talked about it. Your mental game, you're you're being positive, you're putting things in perspective. It is coming there. And I've told you this before. Just keep knocking on the door. 
Yeah, yeah, no, um, <laughs> it'll, uh, I, you know, it's it'll swing open. Yeah, <laughs> it's disappointing, but this is a great start to the year, especially for like the season. Um, you know, I finished sixth, seventh, and second, so you know, there's nothing really to hang my head on, right? Um, but it's you know, it's it's still hard, I guess. Right. <laughs> no, you did great, it's it's a great start to the season, yeah. Yeah, I think that's definitely the big takeaway is where the four strikes to finish the game. You know, the eighth and ninth frames were absolutely perfect. Uh, slapped the 10 on both those shots. So, I mean, I think that's probably hopefully the big takeaway. Uh, and kind of just going back to that, did what what exactly were the changes that you made um, in maybe those frames? Because it, it seemed like uh, you did get it up the lane more, but you just really hit those two shots too. Yeah, I, you know, like all week I wasn't really trying to – I usually my a game was is a lot of access rotation i get around it um but on this pattern there wasn't any free hook to the right like the previous two patterns so um i, I really tried to you know just take a little bit of hand out of it yeah. and close down my angles and really try to roll it to you know try to get the 10 out um i thought the 710 was a pretty good shot so you know i i didn't want to dwell on that for too long just because i knew it was only the fourth frame and i had the rest of the match um it was a bad break but you know i, I wish i would have had the opportunity to you know make a spare so um I, you know at this point it it just is what it was right. and um I played my game. I stuck to, the, you know, everything that Matt and Jim were telling me, and I try to breathe, make good shots, um, you know, and stick to my process. And, you know, I did that. So, um, you know, it's uh, I think it's a good takeaway, but, you know, also, you know, to be real, a disappointment because, you know, this was uh, I, I put a lot of hard work in um, and I'm hoping that eventually I will get to win on a national level because I'm definitely not getting any younger. So, <laughs> I mean, I was the oldest person on my pair, like almost every game. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you will, you will. <laughs> so, I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I used to be the youngest person, and it's so inspiring, especially what Jillian's done all week. And Julia went to the same university that I did, University of Nebraska. So I right. knew she, you know, she's been a great player and I'm glad that team storm won. Um, you know, and if I'm not winning, I, you know, I want one of someone on our team to win. Yep. So um, I'm really proud of her for, you know, the game that she bowled and hopefully next time, um, you know, I'll knock enough pins down to come out on top. I love awesome. it. Great attitude. Great yeah. attitude. Lindsay, you talked about all the hard work, and we've seen it this week. Uh, I, I think you were overall, the, you know, in my opinion, the top performer this week. Uh, you know, you didn't come away with a victory, but uh, you impressed every single day of the seven-day event. And uh, you know, you, you talked about, uh, you know, it, it, it's time for you. And I 100% agree that 2021 is going to be your year. So I cannot wait to see uh, you continue this streak of uh, great performances. And uh, like Carolyn said, like Tony said, it's. It's it's going to happen, and uh, I, I can't wait to uh, potentially be the one to interview interview you when that happens. So I'm looking Absolutely. forward to that moment, and uh, just a, just a fantastic week overall, and uh, we can't wait to see you in April. Yeah, I can't wait, and uh, I'm just going to not be super sad about any of this because, like I said, I you know I I shot over 200, so I mean I'm like 70 <laughs> points in the bonus. I was thinking of that because I remember talking to you after your game. Do you remember? <laughs> came into the bar, right? I was watching you on the big screen mm -hmm. and we were chit-chatting and I just, I'm going to leave you on a positive note also. When you texted me today, you said staying present, positive, and productive. And I think you did all of that. Yeah. So keep doing it. I'm telling you, the door is going to open and it's going to be a double door. And that means it's even bigger. There you go. I hope so. Thank you so Great much. Guys. Thank right. you. Thanks, Lindy. Thank you. All right, everybody, we have uh, concluded the Hall of Fame Classic and the Kickoff Classic Series. We are uh, we are done with bowling after seven days, three yep. national tour titles, regional title. It's uh, it's all come to fruition here. Uh, just an incredible week of bowling. The PWBA Tour is back in 2021. And, uh, I, you know, I want to thank both of you two for uh, 
joining us here, uh, you know, for the fans out there, uh, me being one of them, I just enjoyed the, the insight, the uh, banter. It was great. Uh, you guys were phenomenal. And uh, thank you for being a part of this. No, oh, thanks for asking. This is great. It's nice when you know your counterpart. Absolutely. <laughs> I had a ton of fun. I've always wanted to do this and uh, so pleased to get the opportunity to do it with Carolyn was the only way I would want to do it. So thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. You too, Aaron. You too, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. You keep forgetting about Aaron. Oh, I definitely okay. did not forget about Aaron no. at all. <laughs> all right, folks. Uh, well, uh, we have so many people to thank for the past seven days, but uh, obviously uh, the staff at the ITRC and the PWBA staff who was inside the bubble environment throughout the course of the week. Uh, just thank you to them for their hard work, their dedication, uh, you know, taking time to step away from their families and friends to uh, be a part of this. Uh, we just appreciate the effort uh, every one of you put in so much. So for Tennille Milligan, Rob Gottschall, Caitlin Nelson, uh, Nick Harishni, uh, Lou Marquez, Cecil Scarborough, uh, Jason Thomas, Mike Flanagan, uh, just thank you so much for all your help. Uh, of course, the athletes for competing this week. Uh, just a shout out to the whole team who helped out. We mentioned JT. I uh, can't leave out Kim Richter as well. Um, Mike doing all this cool stuff. Andrew Salaveria. Uh, we got so many other folks who I'm, I'm, I'm not remembering right now, but uh, they're also the entire crew, the just entire so the crew. entire crew, right? The entire crew. And I can't leave off without my guy, Matt Canizaro. So he's been, uh, been here with me throughout the course of the week. So big thanks to Matt as well. I know he's listening right now. So uh, he's enjoying that. But uh, for Tony, Carolyn, I'm Aaron Smith. Folks, we are signing off from the PWBA Kickoff Classic Series. We are here. It happened, uh, and it was safe. So kudos once again to everyone, uh, USBC, BPAA, for making that happen. But uh, we're going to call it a night. We're going to uh, enjoy crowning champions the rest of 2021. So look forward to it right here on Bull TV. And, folks, remember on Bull TV, bowling lives here. Have a great night, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.